Dang it, I have the flash still on. <laughs> she knows I'm taping. Put it down, you weirdo. <laughs> Get down! Get down! You're jumping on the ball! Anyo, why are you so violent? You bent it. Oh no, you didn't. But still, that was pretty rough. You were playing with the ball earlier. That's what I was trying to tape you doing. Stupid flash. Look, there's no flash. You have no idea. <laughs> no matter how much you run in a circle, I can still see you. My little coconut. <laughs> Pushing me. You are so pushy. <laughs> I got you pushing. You were cut on the film pushing. <laughs> Bonked your head. Wing, wing, wing. You're not supposed to crack a coconut. Coconut. No, you're not trying to crack that baby's noggin. I'm trying it to stand up and it doesn't want to stand up. It's got a cotton body and plastic legs. Let's read a book. Which little book? This one. What, baby? Let's read a little book. <laughs> Burpee, baby. Let's let's turn off the TV. It's distracting. <laughs> Something the light shining from the phone is distracting. All right, baby. Come on, sit down. <laughs> Harold's fairy tale. Hey, come on, help me hold it. Kings live in large castles. Harold had to make sure his castle was big enough to be the king's. Come on, he's building a castle for the king. He didn't want to waste time talking to the, any princes or earls or dukes. Well, if you're talking to the duke, then that's a different story. John Wayne was the best duke of all time.
This was a king's castle. All right, baby. Turn the page later. Tall towers and a big draw gate to keep out people the king didn't want to see. But when the draw gate was drawn closed, it kept Harold out also. Or two. Out two. See? <laughs> Reading a one hand ain't easy. Harold shouted for the king to come down and let him in, but the gate didn't open. He walked along the edge of the enchanted garden beside the smooth wall of the castle. Isn't it cool he's drawing the whole thing as he's going along? Till he thought of his purple crayon. Wink, 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 wink. Thank you for holding it. Good job. A person smaller than a very small mouse would be able to get in. Without even bending, he walked into a very small mouse hole. Or a very big mouse hole. Big enough for a small boy to go through. He walked through the mouse hole into the castle. Stop trying to turn it so soon. Wait a second. He invited the mouse in too, but the mouse preferred to stay outside. Baby. Baby. <laughs> Thank you. As he gazed around inside the big castle, Harold felt very tiny. Isn't that funny? He's seeing a castle from a purple line. Paparazzi are here. <laughs> Cooper, sit down. Come back and finish the story. We're halfway done. <laughs> One little goober, two little goober. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Just come finish the story with me. Look at the camera light shining on you. This is not good. <laughs> the princess is mine. <laughs> Mommy's not gone forever. She's being paparazzi sweet. Baby. It's all part of a play. It's called the play, the family play. <laughs> See, you're gonna have a bright light shining in your face. We're gonna give you the third degree. <gasps> Look, he's drawing. And the king might not pay much attention to anybody who is smaller than a mouse, so Harold. Here's his purple crane again. Daddy's reading out his glasses. <laughs> it's okay, because Daddy's nearsighted. Kidding. He made sure he was as tall as uh, maybe I need to move my hand as four and a half steps of stairs, his usual height. Why didn't he make himself bigger? He made himself smaller. We turn the page. He climbed up the stairs looking for the king. Boop, 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 boop. Look at all those stairs he climbed. He went up. And up and up until he got tired and couldn't climb another step. Ugh, I'm tired. That silly baby. Luckily, there were no more steps. He had reached the top. Wink, wink, wink. He couldn't find the king, but he remembered king sat on thrones. Squeak, squeak, squeak. He's drawing a throne. <gasps> Look at that. He drew a throne. Wow, the baby wants to see too. Okay, good job, baby. Come on, sit down. The king's throne looked very... Uh-huh, now you've seen it. Okay, come on. I'm sure that helped. The throne looked very comfortable. Harold thought the king wouldn't mind if he rested a few minutes. Baby, you slobbered on that kid's head. He sat on the throne, wondering what it would be like to be king and wear a crown. Uh-oh, he's getting delusions of grandeur. He tried it with the king's crown. It was all right for a while, but the crown became to feel heavy, or began to feel heavy. <laughs> so happens when you're not all the way reading, you're just kind of guess reading on that one. Dad was just like, "Well, all right." So Harold put it on the king's head. Oh, look at the king! He has new pupils. And thank the king for. Blown of the crown, and he noticed the king looked sad, no doubt because of the garden. Why would the king be sad because of the garden? 
Oh. See the king? <laughs> I am the king with no pupils. Or a ghost king. He asked the king if the trouble was due to the wit to a witch or a giant. The king couldn't say which. <laughs> he looked sad and helpless. Hmm. Great. Evidently, the giant or witch, if the king couldn't tell which it was, was invisible. But Harold told the king not to worry. So he can deal with those invisible demons. He set out to find off the invisible witch or giant, brandishing his purple crayon. And accidentally, he made a hole in the wall. Bloop! The accident embarrassed Harold, but the hole was the handiest way out of the castle. And he climbed through it. I didn't know the hole went out of the castle. And not deeper in. Oh, guess he's drawing everything. When he looked down from the other side of the hole, he realized he'd forgotten how high up he was. Oh no, I'm afraid of heights. He just needed something tall to climb down on something as tall as a steeple. And there's all the people. To fill in the hole of the castle, Harold put a handsome and useful clock in it. He was surprised to see how late it was. <laughs> he drew the time. <laughs> he slid down the steeple to find the invisible witch or giant right away. All he had to do was draw them right there. Punch him in the mush. It wasn't a steeple, it was a pointed hat. Oh no, it was a giant witch! Ah! See, look at <laughs> the purple crayon made it plain. It was an invisible giant witch. Well, no wonder nothing grew in the enchanted garden. There was a witch standing on it. <gasps> oh no, you got poked by the book. Ah, come on, baby. This, fo this phone camera thing is hard to hold. How could anything grow, Harold said to himself, with a giant witch tramping around with big, huge feet. <laughs> yeah, you found feet. So yours are cute little feet. Oh, no, look. <gasps> Scary. Now that he saw the trouble was, all Harold had to do was drive the witch out of the enchanted garden. Mosquitoes, mosquitoes, Harold knew. We'll drive anybody out of a garden, see? the camera. What the heck are you doing, baby? Now you're upside down. You are upside down. Let's see if Daddy can read with his left hand, because his left hand's getting tired from holding the camera. This way, Daddy can also see what he's taping. The mosquitoes. Hey, baby. The mos You skip to the end. We need to stay focused. As a hungry locust. The mosquitoes drove... Baby! The mosquitoes drove out the witch. They were also driving Harold out of the garden. They had to make smoke to get rid of the mosquitoes. Baby, come on. He's drawing stuff. This is highly advanced for your age. Pay attention. Come on, baby. The concept here. This boy has imagination. And he had once heard somebody say that there, where there's smoke, there must be fire. So to put out the fire, he first thought of fire engines, but he said to make it rain. Rain was easier. Oh, really? Draw it like that, I suppose. The rain soaked everything. Here... Harold, too. Okay, it's hard to see the looking through the camera. <laughs> but he said, it's good for the flowers. He was right. Soon there were flowers. Ah, I see. There's the garden. Beautiful flowers popped up all over the enchanted garden. More than Harold was able to count, all in gorgeous bloom. Harold thought, how delighted and happy the king would be when he looked out from his castle in the morning. Through what? The clock? <laughs> he didn't draw any windows. Not yet, at least. And then, amazingly, the last flower turned out to be not a flower at all, but a lovely fairy. 
She held out her magic wand, as fairies always do when they're giving somebody wishes. That'll come true. Harold doesn't like giving people pupils. Bing! Bloopin. You're totally distracted. Nice crown on your baby, or is that one of those Star Trek LeVar eyeball thing? Harold couldn't think of a thing to wish for, but to be polite, he took one wish and told the fairy he'd use it later. Besides, Harold thought, as he started on his long walk home, a wish might come in handy sometime. Let's see, it's almost, almost done, baby, I, I swear. After all the excitement, he suddenly felt tired and stopped and rested for a while. He sat on a small rug because the ground was still somewhat damp from the rain, and he wished. Uh-oh, it's going to start flying, I bet you. Oh, you know it. He wished the rug was a flying carpet. At once, Hild felt it rise in the air. It flew fast and high. Whew. Come on, carpet. We can make it. But when he went so fast, it left the moon behind. Oh, dear. Harold realized he didn't know how to stop the carpet or even slow it down. He'd wished he'd taken two wishes from the fairy so he could wish the flying carpet would land. Yeah, when you draw a flying carpet, always give it. But he didn't have his purple crayon. He did it? What's in his hand? Oh, but he did have his purple crayon. Ha! Huh? He landed the flying carpet in his living room, right behind the high back chair his mother sat in knitting. He made it. Save me his hands. No, look at this page! And he asked her to read him a story before he went back to bed. He didn't bother to draw his mom, I guess. There's a cute little baby here with a royal plastic baby. Okay, Peachy Goober. <laughs> peaches is Peachy. And you is Peaches. Great English, I know. You see your eyes, Goober. Eyeballs. Pretty eyes. Bad temper, one or the other. Baby, it doesn't go on that thing's head. This is what you get for not paying attention <laughs> when Dad is reading a story. Definition of an insanity, right? Oh, you're getting red. <laughs> Maybe it was just a trick of the camera. You look red. Peachy. Peachy pink. Not quite red. You're getting frustrated, I can tell. Let's see if Daddy can help you. Mm hmm. Hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. There you go. Dun 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 dun. You know, your OCD is not helping. <laughs> I hope you're not OCD, but you're be having OCD. And the back of the baby's head was like this. Okay. We'll end here with the crazy... Well, not crazy. Crazy camera. Yeah, crazy camera angle of the lovely princess being cranky. Cranky. Cray cray. Oh, good job! Yay! <laughs> You're a one determined kid. You know? Yeah. <laughs>
that scared Daddy. <laughs> Startled. What's your goal here? Do you have a plan? A rebel plan, I see. A royal rebel plan. Can you be royal and a rebel? Yes! If the government was overthrown by non-loyalists, you try to re-establish the crown, that you're a royal rebel. Illegally trying to re-establish the legality of your crown. All right, baby. It's time to say goodbye. <laughs> oh my goodness. You are going too crabby. This little baby cannot be handling this for much longer. The pressure of the spotlight is overwhelming. And it is way past your bedtime too. Come on little baby, it is no time for this. Hold oh, no, the hand. The hand is coming for your brains. How about we stop? <laughs> oh, look! A different thing! Look, that fits so much better on the baby's head. There you go. Hi, Mama. Hello. Lovely Mama Wabble. Mm -hmm. Baby Goober is so frustrated trying to squeeze that onto that poor baby's head. See how long she leaves that on. She's. See? It gets on there, she takes it off, and she tries to put it back on. She figured it out. <laughs> Little baby Edison. Five thousand failures to get one success. Alright, baby. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right.